the tourism industry in Kerala has started looking at new markets like Japan, Russia, Korea, Australia. Now, what is the kind of traction that you see with these road shows or uh, we are yet to see results? Are the results expected over a period of time? What has been the response to delegations that have been to these parts of the world, new markets? You must be seen. It is tremendously opportunistic to look, look into the emerging markets. Like for example, China is one of the most emerging market in the world right now. And it's not only outgoing, even incoming to China is becoming a huge, huge market. So, as Taj group, we, we ourselves are building hotels in China. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's going to promote both inward and outward mm -hmm. connectivity with, with, within the hotel group. So, it, it's, it's, I think it is a natural phenomenon. But what has been the response from these? The response countries? has been quite good, especially in China, there has been a good response. But the only problem is language. Language, language is a huge So, they come in groups, uh, they will have a interpreter. Even our neighboring state like uh, Sri Lanka, they are doing very well uh, from China, but somehow it is not caught up in India, especially Kerala. I don't know. Maybe Buddhist circle or Circuits. some other. Hmm. Maybe that that may add to the charm of it. Like well, even Maldives, that hmm? even Maldives, Maldives, Maldives is huge for China. Yes. We, when we went to China, John and Ram, we were, we, we, had, uh, we went via Colombo. Hmm. Colombo looked like. China. There were more Chinese there. On the flight, Colombo, well connected. Yeah. Colombo uh, is Beijing, Colombo is Shanghai. Shanghai. They are direct flights. That is a big disadvantage to Kerala. And uh, and all the flights were, were chocker block and barring six Indians or Sri Lankans, everybody was Chinese. What we learnt is that India used to be the number one uh, source for, for Sri Lanka till two, till two years ago. In the last two years, China has overtaken Sri, in India as, as a provider to source. tourist as source. And far ahead, now China now appears to be the number one source market for Sri Lanka, for Maldives, for uh, Bali, for uh, Thailand, for Australia, for all these markets, China has been number one. Now, in fact, we are, as a consequence of that, we, the Chinese ambassador also had come here. We had interaction with him, and he said, it, "Now he's, he's currently the figure to check to Kerala is five thousand Chinese tourists to, to Kerala, five thousand." And of course, he made a very brave promise that I've got three years for my office here. Before I arrive at office, I hope to bring that figure to fifty thousand. And in China, unlike India, India is bo India is bottom up. The, the authority decides, nobody cares. It doesn't matter. But in China, in a similar, in a similar exercise, the Chinese went to, to France and in a conference meeting they said, from next month we should be bringing more, more tourists to, to Paris. Agreement was signed and from next week onwards, there was it, it coming. Because it's a, it's a top-down top decision. Down so China is very, it's a, it's a different. Issues in China, of course, we discovered is, one is language. And two is uh, food, of course, is okay. Mm. But I think there is an issue, more than all this, I don't know whether there is a complete political alignment between the two countries, which is, which is opening up the gates. The numbers of India is infinitely low for the size, two large countries. And our numbers in China are, are very, very, very high. So because we are a free market, we, we, even if we're, India were to give us an advisory, not not to go to China, we will still go. <laughs> that's our remarkable strength of our democracy. And that's what we should hold. And keep our regulators at bay. But one thing, you know, uh, Sri Lanka, we are always compared to Sri Lanka. So, yeah, Sri Lanka has many things. Even cleanliness, we were talking. Uh, five years back or uh, seven years back, Sri Lanka was utter worse than India or Kerala. So After the it has been drastically changed because first two years it was managed by military. So strict law and the implementation has happened through the involvement of military people. Have I must strongly dissent to <laughs> from that view. Military rule to fix tourism industry. Let's educate the people. Even during the benefit of tourism, we should have. I did not see you in Sri Lanka, right through the war times too. And I think Sri Lanka. Look at the architecture there. It's still those 
traditional architecture. They've made an architectural discipline. Look at architecture here. It, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it belongs nowhere. Uh, so, so, so those, we are a sense of identity, sense of place. We're all, these are the issues that need to be addressed. Our architectural uh, our regulatory bodies, heritage regulations, uh, all of them are Excellent. all of them are there. But what happens? So from a, from a Sri Lankan point of view, I think what we're learning is Kerala is now 25 years old in tourism, more or less. That from the new avatar of tourism, mm -hmm. and and from there we've grown from a from a what I would call a laggard state to a high performing state. From from a share of of less than one percent to a share of almost twenty percent of international arrivals, we performed extraordinarily well. It's one industry Kerala can say we can, unlike everything else. We've tried agriculture, we've tried plant we have tried manufacturing, we've tried all that. But here, two industries have succeeded. Two events have succeeded in Kerala. One is tourism. Two is NRK. Correct. Three and a half billion NRKs. Uh, sending 1.5 lakh crores into the state. I hope that now that seems to be in a, in a, in a very fragile situation, yeah, thanks yeah. to the oil prices. Price. So all the more reason that tourism is required. Tourism, is, on the other hand, is an industry which is now brought in. They link it to tourism to farm, link the tourism to health, link the tourism to education. So strong, it has given us a sense of self-esteem and pride. And Kerala has now become our. our our human resource is now fueling, not only in Kerala, but across the world. Cruise ships which come to Kochi, 25% of the, of the staff there are Malayalis. Malayalis. Germany, we used to run an establishment in Germany, there's a Swabish hall, there's a hospital there. That hospital would, will, will, will come to a halt if, German, if our Malayali nurses were to come back. come back. See, look at the human resource factor which is there. So that is... Uh, from, from a tourism, Kerala is able to be able to explore the world and tourism has played a big, big role. Tourism has played that role and historically it was the gateway of the Indian subcontinent to the world. Muzuris is, is India's port. From Muzuris went everything and in, perhaps it was the Malabar Coast pepper which cost us our freedom to 